Uh, it, is, it is good to be here, and it is good to be with folks who, who are absolutely uh, doing what is the right and best thing and what California needs, and that is jobs. And uh, you are in the midst of that. You are uh, in the midst of uh, creating and helping California, I think, uh, the answer to what we've got to do here in the state of California for our economic challenges is simply get Californians back to work. And uh, so I want to share a few, sir, few share uh, some of those thoughts um, this afternoon on that. Uh, first of all, I always like to at least tell a little, you know, at least at least a minute or two on what the B Board of Equalization is, right? I mean, you know, it's kind of like BOE. What does that spell? Um, and so let me just say, California is very unique. It's the only state that has a directly elected ta uh, tax board. I simply tell people I get to every day, along with a very talented staff, we get to be taxpayer advocates for the, for, for the citizens of California. We get to make sure that they are fairly represented when it comes to sometimes an overpowering tax bureaucracy. And we try our best to make sure that they are well represented, that they have their issues set before, for, uh, whether it's an appeal or whether it's before an order, in a, in a fair uh, way. Uh, you know, if you're a business and you're trying to struggle along the way, the last thing you're worrying about at times is, gee, what am I going to do or how I respond to some auditor who walks into my office or some challenging issue that's before me and trying to get my business going here in the state of California. And you need help. And that's what we seek to do. The state of California is very unique because, again, you have an elected official uh, who represents you on those tax issues. Uh, California has four uh, directly elected tax board members. Uh, the districts are huge. My district starts in Southern California and ends at the Oregon border. And uh, you're kind of like right in the middle of it right here. And uh, so we have about 9 million constituents. And so there are lots of challenging issues that we help our constituents with when it comes to tax tax issues. One of the issues that I believe we are is certainly taxpayer advocates. Our goal is to fight for taxpayers to help them succeed. Primarily what we do at the Board of Equalization are business tax issues. But on the board we also hear all the appeals dealing with personal income tax too. But our goal certainly is to be able to give fair representation to hardworking Californians. You know, and I think one of the challenges that we have in the state of California is that we are a high-tax state. And as a result of that, I think that those create a lot of difficulties and challenges, both for individuals and for those who are seeking to do business in the state of California. In fact, I basically start with a philosophy that I believe Californians are overtaxed. And, you know, it's not uh, hard for me to get there when you look at the tax rates in California. In a very simple way, I also believe that tax over, over taxation is lethal to individual personal liberty. Because when it is that somebody's taking your money, it means you have less to spend. Somebody else is making decisions for you with your money. And all of a sudden, you can't do as much as you could have done, whether it's in your personal life or whether it's in your business life. So as we look at the challenges that way, I guess that's why it is that I look back and say, well, where's California stand? Well, California ranks amongst the highest in sales tax, fuel taxes, uh, in sales tax. In fact, the Tax Federate Foundation ranks California uh, the fifth highest tax state in the nation. And unfortunately, the way it works out is that you and I get to work till April 16th of every year, at least this year, before we've completed all of our tax obligations to our state and local and federal government. So the good news is that we're about halfway through the year in our own period of time where we're making money for ourselves. I really believe that it's high taxation and complex and aggressive regulatory schemes that have helped feed California's unemployment rate. There's really no other way to explain it. I mean, think about it. California, the second highest unemployment rate in the nation. Now, I'm a little uh, skeptical, at least a little bit, with the second highest, too, because, see, I don't necessarily look at Nevada as a necessarily a full economy. It's kind of a niche economy. California is a full economy. And we're the highest unemployment rate of a, what I would think of a full economy state. 
Now, why? How can that be? California? You know, think about it. I don't know about you, but my, my parents came here um, back in the mid-50s because California was a place of great promise and opportunity. Left upstate New York and went to California because that's where the jobs were. That's where the growth was. And, you know, in those days and days after that, people drove through states like Texas and New Mexico and Arizona and Nevada. They were just, they were just kind of desert on the way to California because California was such an exciting place to be. Such an exciting place to be for your family to set down new roots, to find that new job. How things have changed. Now we see U-Hauls packed up and going to those states that my family drove through in order to get to a land of opportunity. What changed? Was it the climate? Was it our wonderful landscape? No. What's changed is a high tax rate and overregulation driven to California to the highest unemployment rate in the nation when it comes to true full economies. So how do we get out of it? What's the opportunity? We need to create a vital private sector job center. Um, I spent, um, I spent uh, 12 years in the legislature. Four of those years I uh, was in the assembly, and four of those, or excuse me, six of those years in the assembly, four of those years I was the lead budget negotiator for the assembly Republicans. I sat on conference committees for four years in the late 90s. That's when we had so much money we didn't know what to do. We spent money on all kinds of projects and issues because California had a, 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 a wonderful going economy at that time. That's why it is when I look at the challenges of today and people are saying, well, how do we need to readjust the tax system? What is it we need to do in order to kind of bring our budget back into balance? I say, hold on. California has enough opportunity when Californians are working to have plenty of revenue. Plenty of revenue. The last thing we need to do right now is when Californians aren't working is to go back to those that are working and say, we need more of your money. That is a recipe to keep California in a longer, harder recession. And quite frankly, if we look at the economies that we are competing with in other states, it'll make it just that much more difficult for us to keep our businesses here in the state. And it would be off the table to think of moving those businesses back to California or attracting new businesses to California. That's the challenge we have before us. So what does that mean? It means that we need to be rolling up our sleeves and looking at how do we create jobs in the state of California. That should be priority one. That's how it is that we're going to solve our budget problem. That's how we're going to solve how do we get money back to schools. That's how we're going to solve how do we create uh, and, and stitch up the holes in the, in the, in the, in the social, network, in the social net. It's not going to be going back to taxpayers again. It's going to be getting Californians back to work. Business is successful, so taxes are paid. That's the formula that we've got to deal with. And that's the real budget problem that we face here in California. It's pretty obvious. For seven straight years in a row, CEOs have ranked California the worst place to do business. You know, I've talked to many of them. And there's some businesses who just can't leave. You know, if you're related to you know, ag, timber, whatever that is, you know, you're kind of like, you're not going to, you can't just pick up that business and move somewhere. You're here. But if you're flexible at all, at all, and you can, what you can, you're making a widget, or you're doing a service industry of some kind, and you can do that somewhere else, you're thinking hard about why it is you should stay in California. And I talk to folks all the time that are in the midst of that. You know, one of the things I ask just to de demonstrate that, is when people have financial flexibility to move, what are they thinking about? 
So I like to talk to folks that, uh, you know, and, and, I, and as I talk to a group, I say, well, you know people who are retiring, right? And they say, yeah, I know people are retiring. What are they doing? For the most part, people say they're leaving the state of California. That's because when you're retired and you have a regular income coming in, you no longer are, you are no longer uh, kind of stuck in the state. And so all of a sudden you start making financial decisions for yourself because you can now have flexibility to move. And you move somewhere where it is that you have greater opportunity, your own economic opportunity. That's why I like to remind people when we're dealing with tax issues is that tax policy has consequence. Tax policy changes behavior. Oftentimes when we're in the legislature and dealing with issues or even in the board, we'll talk about some change in tax policy. And it's always interesting to me when we start estimating what the tax revenues are going to be. And I don't know if you've ever noticed, but they never quite get up to the amount that the estimates were. And it's simply because tax policy has consequence. It changes behavior. It's not static. Unfortunately, what happens over the capital oftentimes is you just need to balance the budget. And to balance the budget, you just need to book a number. And oftentimes that becomes the goal, booking a number. And so what are we doing now? Let's see, what, a few months ago, Bill, we had a balanced budget, right? And that, I read that in the newspaper. <laughs> I read that. Bill and my wife lost a month's salary out of the deal because they <laughs> <laughs> But uh, they had a balanced budget because they booked numbers that just were not true. And now, guess what? What did we, read, what did we hear just yesterday? Legislative analyst said, oh, nearly $4 billion off right now at the end of this year. And that's just the, and that's just the opening number. That's just the opening number. It's because we faked our way through and forced a balance rather than choosing to do what we needed to do. And that is, how do we get jobs and people back to work in the state of California? Again, you can't solve California's problems by hiring more state employees, county employees, or city employees, or school employees. You're only going to solve California's economic problems by hiring people into the private sector and creating private sector jobs. Because that's where those revenues will come from for all of those other employees that we need here in the state, whether they be in the local government, the county government, the state government. That's the perspective that we have to have. You know, I'm amazed, even today, I run into legislators who think that people will not leave California. Now, I don't know where they, what they're watching, but I can remember debates and discussions, even as late as this year, where people just say, but California is a great place. They want to be here. And the answer is, yeah, they can, but they can't afford it. And there's nothing to keep them here because their jobs aren't here. And so they're having to leave. You know, I think that uh, as we move forward then, we need to look at what the opportunities are and how we solve that problem. And I certainly have strongly believed that enterprise zones are an important tool. You know, I, Micah's grandfather, my dad, had a tool for everything. I, on the other hand, have like have a screwdriver and a hammer. And I usually don't have the right screwdriver. You know, it's the Phillips screwdriver I needed, and I didn't need that other one. And I have a hammer, sometimes. And that's how I end up. And so if, if something's broken at my house, and you can't fix it with a screwdriver or a hammer, i got to make a call. Because <laughs> I can't, that's the extent I've got of my tools. And, you know, I, I kind of think that's where we are in the state of California. We need tools. We need tools. Just having a screwdriver and a hammer, just having a wonderful climate, you know, a great place to live isn't enough. It's not what's going to keep California jobs here. You know, I had a, my, my experience with, with Enterprise Zones was actually far before I got to the legislature. I was uh, serving the city council. 
and uh, had uh, and, and expanded Enterprise Zone when I was in the City Council in Lancaster back in, in the mid-90s, early 90s, somewhere in the 90s. Um, and uh, I can remember specifically going down uh, and uh, going to a company in California who was ready to leave to the Midwest, a camper manufacturer. Already had made arrangements. They were on their way to the Midwest in order to build campers. And uh, we went and made our pitch to them. Said, you need to stay in California. And let us tell you what we can do. Let us show you what we can, how we can help you. And we went down and we made that pitch. And today that camper is still there. And in fact, decided to move into the trailer business too, adjust to the things that are happening. And as a result, hired 200 new jobs last year, additional jobs. And on top of that, what we've seen in, 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 in the city of Lancaster, where, again, where, where, where we had created that, is so we were able to bring in folks like Deluxe Check, uh, Rite Aid, distribution centers, those kind of businesses that we needed to have in the state of California and that we needed to have in our community, and that was the tool that we used. And that's why it is we need to continue to maintain those tools. Now, unfortunately, Ironically, I guess, and unfortunately, uh, that particular enterprise zone, along with Watsonville, is a, are going to are set to expire next first part of the next year. And I and I and I, I you know, I will be uh, dumbfounded if some of those jobs I know, if I've talked to some of the principals, they're all of a sudden going to start looking again as to where they can go. And again, California. Highest unemployment rate of a fully, full economy state is going to be shipping more jobs out of the out, out, out of the state. We need to be figuring out how to protect those jobs, how to grow those jobs. You know, I think the other issue that happens, I think, whenever we get into these situations, whenever we try to do anything legislatively or try to come up with a plan, it's never perfect. So I'm always amused when it is that. Any program is attacked when it has some flaws. As if every, any program, every program doesn't have challenges. And I think it's going to be important as you all work together, whether you're on the uh, enterprise local side or whether you're on the consultant side or whatever you're a part of, the business side, you need to look within. You need to see what are the adjustments that can be made because every program and every issue should be getting better. But you know, we all need to agree. And I think even those who are looking for that evaluation and whether or not programs are and the, and the system works need to agree that nothing's going to be perfect. You just can't put together an economic program that somebody doesn't figure out how to manipulate a little bit. You just can't. Because if you try, and that's why I'm a little fearful of this next round that may go on, that is we're going to try to make everything so airtight that it's not going to work for anybody. All of a sudden, we're going to make it so narrow, so difficult, so challenging that the beneficiaries of that kind of a program will just be so few that we won't see the jobs created that we need to have. Now, it's not an excuse for when it is that we need to fix a problem. But at the same time, I don't want to necessarily believe, or I believe that sometimes, if we're not careful, we try to make the little errors or the challenges that need to be fixed the excuse for doing away with the program. And we need to be very careful with that. And you need to be able to be the ones, I think, walking the halls of the Capitol in the next few weeks, the next few months, first of the year, to make sure that that's communicated very clearly. Well, again, I want to thank you for the opportunity of being here. I want to thank you for what you do. Again, you're on the forefront of job creation. I always believe that the first best people to make job creation is going to be on the local level. Um, you know, I, I, I've, again, worked in Sacramento long enough, worked, in, you know, worked with uh, different administrations long enough to realize that, you know, they're not going to hire a lot of people in the private sector from the state of California or in the, from, coming from the capital in California. It's going to be those who are in the local levels, who are rolling up their sleeves, who are meeting with people who are trying to figure out what to do in their business, 
who are going to be the ones that actually help create and, and create an opportunity for job creators to stay and grow and come to California. So I thank you, because you are on the front line. You are making that happen. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've got great hope for California. Because, you know, the same things that brought many of us here in the beginning are all still here. And I think we're going to cycle through this. I think we're going to get through this. It's going to be painful at times. And I think one of the things that's going to happen is all of a sudden there's going to be a lot of folks over in the Capitol figure have, will finally figure out that all the good programs they want to do, whether it be universities, colleges, foster care programs, lots of really good things, schools aren't going to work unless you got people working in the state of California. And I think pretty soon, and maybe this is going to be the time, when all of a sudden the reality, those budget cuts that they're having to face now this, this year, are going to say, whoops, we're going to have to do something different. And I'm hoping we're going to see it through some beneficial tax policies to create jobs and some reasonable changes in regulatory environment in order to be able to help people at least stay in the state of California to keep their workers and their jobs here. Thanks very much. Thanks for what you do.